Like many things in life, things just go more smoothly and effectively with a plan. And of course, the same is true for our finances. Here to help us with a unique approach to both understand what a financial plan is and how to make it our own is the Martha Adams. <laughs> to talk about this because sometimes I think finance, you know, people get the eyes, the eyes glaze over and, you know, you're going to make this really applicable to all of us. What are we doing today? So today we're going to combine two of my favorite things. Okay. We're going to talk about finances and we're going to talk about baking. So <gasps> we're actually going to review the key ingredients of a financial plan yeah. while walking through a cake recipe together. Yeah. But we're gonna have a focus on our secret ingredient that we'll talk about in a little bit. Oh my gosh, I love that. So you love baking. I do love baking. And I love bakers. Well, this is great. We make a great team. <laughs> it's gonna I got be so you. good. <laughs> Okay, how do we start? So let's start off with the base ingredients in our recipe, our flour, sugar, and salt. And that represents the base ingredients in a financial plan, which are our goals, short, medium, and long-term goals. Yep. Then we have our butter and our olive oil. Yeah. That represents our investments that are going to grow and multiply for you over time to help you achieve those goals. So that compound goodness of interest, yes. right? Yes, yes. Now we have the flavor ingredient. So we have orange zest, lemon zest, and vanilla bean paste. And these represent what we get sometimes the most excited about when it comes to financial planning, yeah. retirement planning. Because oh, yeah. it's the flavor, it's what represents our financial independence. It's our sweet, it's the sweet stuff. It is the sweet right? stuff. That's what yeah. we're working towards. Exactly. Now we're moving on to eggs. Yes. So the eggs represent tax planning. Mm. It's what brings everything together to help you grow your money effectively okay so that's the that's tax planning yeah this has to be the good stuff as well it is also very good it, it is also is. very good that is it's not taxes over here it's not taxes no What's but this? tax planning is great let's let's get I up for tax planning you got to plan for the taxes <laughs> so it's good but the here we have wine and uh -huh. that wine represents estate planning which okay. you know is excellent for every single Canadian right. because, you know, similar to wine, it's something that you start now mm -hmm. to enjoy later. So starting yes. now to allow it time to maturity. And I'm just going to make one other analogy Please. with wine. I think a lot of people think, oh, I've got to know my wines. I have to know my grapes. I have to understand the flavors. I have to savor it. You don't have to know anything about wine to jump in and drink it. Absolutely. Same with estate planning. Absolutely. Jump so don't in. think it's for the richy riches. It's for It's everyone. for all of us. It Get is. into it and ask your financial advisor. Ask the Martha Adams in your life because this is something all of us should be doing. Absolutely. I don't care if you have $2 in the bank. A hundred percent. Everybody works it. for the money they earn and yeah. they deserve estate planning. Absolutely. Okay, then now the grapes. Grapes represent risk management planning. So okay. that's where you are planning for the different risks in your life to protect yeah. yourself from that. Example of that, life insurance. Insurance, yes. got it. Yes. Okay, so we have all the ingredients together. What have we made? This is what we have made. Okay. So this on the surface yeah. might look good. Uh -huh. But it's actually flattened and dense. The reason... Oh, that's not the cake we want. This isn't actually the cake that we want because okay. it is missing our secret ingredient. In our recipe, yeah. this is baking soda and baking powder. Oh. And this represents the secret ingredient in our financial plan, mm -hmm. which is our emotional connection. So oh. when you pull up... The so different. This is how our that's cake should look. That's how it's supposed to look. This is what makes all the difference. And this is what happens often in financial planning because we can have great ingredients. Yeah. But when we bring it all together, it can often feel dense and fall mm. flat. Our secret ingredient, our emotional connection, yeah. is what brings life to it all and it makes the conversation truly your own. Oh, I love that. The emotions smell good. It does. <laughs> <laughs> it smells good. Mm. Right. Emotions. Okay, so what are some questions we can ask ourselves when uncovering uh, our feelings about money? Because our feelings about money are very complex. They are. So here is a simple idea that I love to recommend for starting to connect with our emotional associations with money. Okay. So the first is, in a word, ask yourself how you are 
currently feeling when it comes to your finances. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then ask yourself why you're feeling that way three times. Mm -hmm. Next, ask yourself in a word how you want to be feeling about your finances. Then yeah. ask yourself why three times. In the first question, you've brought a greater awareness to the way that you're feeling. Mm -hmm. And in the second question, that's your fuel to move forward. Why three times mm -hmm. allows you to go beyond the surface of how you're feeling mm -hmm. to really understand your emotions at the source. You're, you're trying to chip away at the layers there. So give Absolutely. us an example of this idea of asking ourselves three times. Why is that important? So here's a non-financial example okay. where I was talking with a friend of mine and she was upset with her husband because she came home and the laundry he promised to get done wasn't done. Right. So I asked her why three times. The first time I asked her why she was feeling the way she was feeling, she said it's because she came home, she was upset that he promised he would do something and then he didn't, he didn't. do it. So it bothered her. Yeah. Why? because that meant there was something else on her list to do and that stressed her out. Yes. Why? Because she had a really tough day at work mm. and things have been really tense there lately. Mm -hmm. So there it is. Mm -hmm. That's the power of why times three because we could have been talking about the laundry all day but mm -hmm. that's not it at its source. And that's the same when it comes to our emotional associations with money. Here yeah. we can see the difference between the how and the why. The emotional association is what our leavening ingredient is mm -hmm. and our fuel for sweet financial success. And I promise oh, you the cake is sweet that. too. I bet it is. <laughs> Thank you. Amazing. Uh, you can find some more information that you put up for us on our website. What, what are they going to find there at cityline.tv? So they're going to find a free activity that's going to help them connect with their emotional associations Good. on money and work through that a little bit deeper, more, more, you know, involved. Involved. Yeah. I love that because we need to do the work so we yeah. can stack up those dollar bills, right? Yes. Thank you, Mark.